I watched a video about South Korea being a cyberpunk dystopia right after writing this video because it's an idea that I find captivating, even if the video isn't what I imagined it would be. It, because the comparison isn't really applicable, Korea can't be compared to a fictional dystopia because when the comparison is applicable, it isn't really as fanciful as you might expect. Sure, these companies are hidden and shrouded in mystery, but because they're not literally evil, there's nothing there. There is something there. It sucks that these companies are so large that Korea has a declining population and overworked students and whatever else you could say sucks, but it's not really enough to be as interesting as fictional dystopia, fictional cyberpunk dystopia. Fictional worlds can showcase the facets of their world in a way that no documentary can or ever has for my world. These dystopias can seem so dystopian because it can be described. We can see a snippet of someone's life and hear about how that correlates to every single person in that society. Cyberpunk Edgerunner paints a view of a city under a thumb because even the luckiest and strongest guy can do nothing to change it. Heck, none of the people whether you think they're evil, wrong, morally gray, or good, can change the society. R reality might be similar, with even pioneers and revolutionaries being beholden to forces beyond them, and with any change being less than promised. But it's still change, there's still change. Even when there's empty change, like you might see in dystopia, it's not evil like fictional dystopia, so it's not interesting. Because evil is interesting. So evil, it's popular because evil is interesting. It's a lot more interesting than depressing because depressing is depressing. The reason why you don't see a lot of good or popular depressing stories is because depressing isn't really interesting. It's just depressing. Meanwhile, evil can be very interesting. So like a dystopia that is ruthless and stomps on feelings and destroys hope can be way more interesting just because even if it's unstoppable it's still not boring to watch this evil person be evil and when it is stoppable it's able to be taken down contradictorily while a society that destroys hope can be interesting a society without hope isn't a dream shot down before it begins is not interesting it doesn't even allow for catharsis karmic justice anti-karmic justice or for questions of what is right and wrong to prove. A dream shot down as it's being realized might allow for interesting ideas, but no dream at all can't even be a bad story because it's just a snapshot of life, it's a picture. It doesn't change. That's how reality is when you're living in it, and maybe that's why documentaries are so boring to me. Only war or revolution or huge advancements in science can be told as stories, as more than just an unchanging image. Everything else is uninteresting or fiction. As an experiment, say that Koreans actually do have terrible lives under huge businesses as human machines. Even if reality isn't close to that, or only vaguely if you squint similar to that, it's always going to be boring. That's because it's boring even when exaggerated to the point where all Koreans live never happy, always sad lives under monolithic companies. Maybe I'm only projecting my thoughts on what's boring and not onto something that shouldn't even be judged. Still, I believe that it can be judged since reality is where story comes from. And non-fiction stories especially, specifically, are directly related to reality and tied directly to how interesting that reality is. Um, for example, trivia. Trivia tests you. It tests you in more ways than one. It's literally a memorization game, but it allows for you to test your understanding. You might understand the question, who invented gunpowder has the answer... Birdie, something or other, but you likely don't know when the first monument to Birdie was erected because... Does that matter? Gunpowder is famous, and its inventor is slightly less famous, but its inventor's first monument is way less famous. And why? Well, gunpowder is used everywhere and known even by children. Its inventor is much less known, but hugely important due to the invention, so still known. 
The monument to an inventor is almost never known, but if it is, it's likely because whoever individual that knows it lives near the monument, or has some personal connection to it, or anything other than because it might be asked during trivia to know it. It's always more personal because if it's not, it's nowhere near interesting enough to be remembered as a story. What I'm getting at is that information is only interesting when it meets a certain criteria, enough criteria. And, you know, if you hold a personal connection to something, some piece of information, or the information has some important historical or modern value, it can be an interesting story. Knowing that some companies are big is interesting, sure, but that might only help you with trading stocks or understanding that the reason Riot and Epic and mobile freaking games are so similar is because they're owned by the same dude. And it's why I made a video on that.